Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching and Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel. So obviously this is Pro Wrestling Logic. We've got almost 2,000 of these available. Uh, this is the January 23rd, 1982 uh, um, episode. I've watched up through, uh, let's see, May. I've got time to record a few more here today. So we'll probably get somewhere into February. Anyway, the tag team tournament officially announced. Um, Sandy Scott announces that there is a multi-team tournament. Uh, kind of confusing. They don't really talk a great deal about everything that's going to happen, but going to be multi-cities across multi-states, and for the most part, um, be leading to kind of a seeding process. Heavy run towards tag team wrestling being a major big deal here. Uh, and kind of uh, getting things going in that way. Um, you know, kind of a, a, a bit of a, a tester. Uh, Vinny Valentino and Austin Idol up first here. Idol with some takedowns, basic stuff, uh, and Valentino gets out the back door. Austin Idol, again, a guy who is a major star. Uh, Bob Cottle and uh, Roddy Piper continue to talk about the tag team tournament for several weeks, so that seems to be the predominant thing to make Mid-Atlantic different is it as literally a tag team territory. So now, uh, having never watched the Mid-Atlantic stuff before, this is the kind of my first foray into it, uh, certainly as a, as a weekly episodic television program. Um, you can kind of see where that uh, Carolina's love for tag team wrestling comes in. Anyway, punch kick by Austin Idol. Idol is talked about who he's going to team with and just kind of wondering a little bit about that uh, with uh, certain city tournaments being worth $25,000. Hard shots uh, several times by Valentino. Doesn't get everything he wants, but does fire back on uh, Austin Idol quite a bit, and Idol eventually gets... Uh, into the figure four, holds on to the figure four for several minutes, and eventually does get the win with the maneuver. Um, you know, Jim Crockett talks about uh, uh, teams coming from all over the world, including mentioning teams in the WWF, mentioning teams in, in the AWA. Just interesting that they're really coming together to talk about teams from all over the wrestling world and internationally coming into uh, this particular Mid-Atlantic tournament. And whether that tournament actually happens or whether it's a kayfabe tournament, I don't know. I would assume kayfabe. But Sergeant Slaughter up here next in a uh, match um, uh, kind of coming, coming forward there. Um, kind of brought in a little bit and... Uh, uh, or actually Jay Youngblood kind of brought in a little bit there, uh, managing to kind of hook on to his uh, situation in a tag team environment, and uh, Roberts and uh, uh, Youngblood are back to teaming here, which is kind of interesting just on the, ba on the basis of uh, why they stopped for a while, Jake Roberts and uh, Jay Youngblood against Markoff and Alexander. Cut off of the ring, Roberts uh, does the majority of the selling, gets uh, body slammed around a bit here, and, um, you know, Youngblood kind of brought in for shorter spurts. Youngblood has been, has uh, challenged, and uh, for some reason, I don't know why I wrote Slaughter there, but anyway, Jake Roberts eventually does grind things to a slower pace with a headlock, uh, the side headlock, and kind of keeps things going in his general direction as far as that headlock is concerned, doesn't get everything he wants out of things, does, uh, you know, kind of tighten up on the hammer lock and uh, the short knee lift win for Roberts here. Um, Roddy Piper, not exactly a happy fellow, uh, because he, he says he is going to add to the tag team tournament, but doesn't want to tell anybody where that team is going to come from. Then we move to another in the series of matches on the day's program, which happens to be um, uh, Porkchop Cash and Tony Russo. Porkchop Cash, new to the area, at least for this time period. Don't know if he's been here before or not, because I don't know enough about my Mid-Atlantic history prior to what's available on the network to know if he's been here or not. I know Porkchop Cash, guy throughout the Mid-South and, and Memphis and all that, but anyway... 
kind of rolls through. Tony Russo has been here before. We've talked about him uh, as an enhancement talent. Uh, we see several uh, power maneuvers from Porkchop Cash. Gets a splash and eventually the victory. Austin Idol talks about being one of the best guys in the area. Talks about uh, wanting to be at his best and coming forward. House show promo also John Studd talking about uh, everybody needing to look up to Studd or every, him looking down at everybody else, including mention of that with Ricky Steamboat. So maybe house show feud there is is uh, potentially possible. Anyway, Ray Stevens talks about wanting to formulate a tag team of his own and go into the tournament, win the city tournaments and all of that. Johnny Weaver going to team with Stevens. Potentially Weaver talks about uh, coming out of um, maybe not retirement, but out of hiding a little bit. Uh, for that, uh, upco- those upcoming opportunities. Not going to acknowledge this, but Killer Khan coming into the area as well. Not going to acknowledge it because we've covered it on the All American series at the time, or the uh, All Star series at the time, the actual match. But they do show footage of Killer Khan coming in as a uh, you know reasonable guy here. Then also there is uh, footage of a Stan Hansen match. Odd that they're just kind of bringing people in. Uh, they call the guy that he's facing Luke Williams, not the sheep herder by any stretch of the imagination. Hansen has been through the area before and also kind of seen as a guy who is a uh, major force, has been to the WWF dealing with Bruno. They acknowledge Bruno uh, in part passing during the commentary here. Uh, Hansen obviously grabs some side headlocks, but known for the power stuff and uh, manages to get a win after a big lariat one, two, three. Uh, the continuation of uh, Sergeant Slaughter as U.S. champion is talked about. Slaughter, Slaughter and uh, Private Carnoodle cut promos talking about the upcoming tournament. And uh, needless to say, uh, Roddy Piper. Kind of gets in there with only Anderson. Maybe Anderson could be his partner. Anderson obviously not liking to have to have partners for this uh, multi-city, multi-team tournament. Then we move to another in the series of matches. Terry Taylor uh, is here. Uh, Steve Siebert is the uh, adversary for the moment. Taylor with the head scissors takeover. Then kind of rolls through into a basic uh, series of maneuvers. Terry Taylor... Uh, really all over the place at the time because of that rookie of the year status. Hits a leapfrog and a dropkick under the chin. Classic babyface stuff from Taylor. Taylor really hasn't found a major program. I don't know if he ever really does in the area, but uh, goes to the arm bars and basic maneuvers here. Uh, Siebert comes up and, you know, does some basic mat wrestling. Uh, Taylor cuts off the leg on his opponent and manages to stay Pretty aggressive before getting the five iron or the five the five arm, aka the forearm, and getting a victory there. Sergeant Slaughter up next. Slaughter um, in a tag team match uh, to uh, close the sl- to close the show. Uh, Slaughter and Nelson against Gilbert, uh, I believe Don Gilbert and uh, Tony Anthony. Uh, Slaughter brawling and taking shots at uh, Gilbert across the uh, top turnbuckle. I don't believe that's actually Doug Gilbert in there, although it could be. Uh, Hard shots and uh, various other things uh, by Sergeant Slaughter. Slaughter cranking up on chin locks, and uh, Anthony tries to get in at the last minute. We see quite a bit of more brawling from the tandem of Slaughter and uh, his adversary, and then... Uh, the Cobra Clutch applied by both um, Nelson and Slaughter going forward. Uh, talk about teaming, including, um, you know, Blackjack Mulligan, Junior and Senior, Jake Roberts. They're all ready for this tag team tournament that's forthcoming. Uh, winning $25,000 for a nightly tournament, plus the 16 to 18 teams they eventually talk about being a major force in the tournament. We will be back with more right after this.